We're on problem 120. 120. David has D books, which is three times as many as Jeff. So D books is three times as many as Jeff. And one half as many as Paula. So D is equal to one half the number of books Paula has. How many books do the three of them have together in terms of D? OK, so they want to know how much D plus J plus P is in terms of D. So what's J in terms of D? J is equal to divide both sides by 3 is equal to D over 3. And what's P in terms of D? P is equal to, if we multiply both sides by 2, you get P is equal to 2D. So this turns into D plus J, which is D over 3, D over 3, plus P, which is 2D, which is equal to, let's find a common denominator, well, 3. 1D is the same thing as 3D over 3. D over 3, well, that's still just going to be D over 3, or D over 3. 2D over 3. 2d, that's the same thing as 6d over 3. 6d over 3. That's equal to, let's see, 3, 4, plus 6 is 10d, 10d over 3, or 10 thirds d. And that's choice c. 10 thirds d is choice c. Problem 121. 121. There are eight teams in a certain league, and each team plays each of the other teams exactly once. Fair enough, eight teams, and they each play each other each exactly once. If each game is played by two teams, fair enough, it's a traditional game, what is the total number of games played? Total number of games played. OK, so let's think about it a little bit. Let's think about it. They each play each other exactly once. So this th this turns into the, that grid problem that we did last time. Because think about it. If I have eight teams, so let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I, I'm going to write the same team. 1, <clears throat> 2, 3, sorry, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8. They can't play each other, so none of you know, one's never going to play one, two's never going to play two, three's never going to play three, four's never going to play four, and et cetera, all the way down the diagonal. You can't play yourself. <clears throat> and one's going to play two, exactly one game, right? That's one game. And we're not going to write two played one, because one already played two, right? They only play each other once. So you don't want to count <clears throat> this one down here. You don't want to count this one. This is when one plays three. This is when two plays three. So essentially, <clears throat> you want to figure out all of these spots that are above the diagonal. Well, let's think about how many spots there are. First of all, how many total spot spots there are? If we have an eight by eight square, there are eight times eight. You could you could say squares on this grid. If I actually drew them as squares, I did that in a couple of problems ago. If I actually drew it like that, <clears throat> you would have, and then you might you might see the grid a little bit better. But I think you get the idea. You have eight by eight spots on this grid, right? Because there's eight spots. It's eight spots high, eight spots wide. So you have 64 spots. Now, you're not going to have one of the games along the diagonal, because that would be a team playing itself. So how many spots are along the diagonal? Well, there's eight, right? There's one against one, two and two, three and three. So that's each team playing itself. So there's eight spots along the diagonal. So 64 minus eight is 56. 56. And so 56 would give us a number of squares that aren't in the diagonal. But if we counted all of them, we would be double counting. We would be counting that we'd play we'd be counting one playing two up here and two playing one, right? So we only want to count half of the remaining squares. So if you divide this by two, you get twenty-eight. So it'd be there'd be a total of twenty-eight games. And that's choice C. Question one twenty two. 122. An operation theta is defined by the equation a theta b is equal to a minus b over a plus b for all numbers a and b such that a does not equal minus b. That ensures that the denominator does not equal 0. So they're defining the domain. If a equaled minus b, then it would be undefined, because you'd have something divided by 0. If 
A does not equal negative C, so they tell us if A does not equal minus C and A theta C is equal to 0, then C is equal to, OK, fair enough. So they're telling us right now that A does not equal minus C. So if so let's just write it down. A theta C. A theta C is equal to A minus C, right? Over A plus C. And then that we want to set equal to zero, because they're telling us A theta C is equal to zero. Right? They're telling us that A does not equal minus C. So they're telling us that A does not equal minus C. So they're, that's essentially saying, because if A was minus C, then the denominator would be 0, and we'd have something really strange. So they're telling us that the denominator does not equal 0. So if the denominator does not equal 0, and this fraction equals 0, then the numerator of this fraction has to be equal to 0. Or another way you could say it, you could say A minus C over A plus C is equal to 0. We know A plus C is not equal to 0, so let's multiply both sides of the equation times it. And you get a minus c is equal to 0 times a plus c. Well, that's just 0. Another way of saying I mean, if a fraction is equal to 0, the denominator is not 0. That would make it undefined. Then the numerator has to be equal to 0. So then just solving, you get a is equal to c. Right? Add c to both sides. So they want to know what c is equal to. So c is equal to a. And that is choice e. Next question. Let me switch colors. 123. The price of a lunch for 15 people was $207. Price for 15 was $207, including a 15% gratuity for service. So that was plus 15%. What was the average price per person excluding, excluding the gratuity? OK, so essentially, we want to figure out, so this is the price, so price before Price of 15 before gratuity times, so this is after gratuity, so I'll call this price before gratuity. I don't want to get too complicated with my notation. Price before gratuity times 1.15, right, because we're going to increase it by 15, is equal to $207, right? And we want to we want to figure out, so the price before gratuity of the 15 people is equal to 207 divided by 1.15. And we want to figure out the average price per person. So we want to figure out this divided by 15. So we want to figure out that divided by that divided by 15. OK, well, this looks at, at its heart kind of, kind of mathy, but we'll, you know, it looks like we have to do a lot of, let's just chug through it and see where we can go. So this is the same thing as 207 times 1.15 times 1 over 15. And that's equal to, let's maybe we should, that's equal to 207 divided by 15 times 1.15 denominator. Let's figure out the denominator first. So, well, maybe the numerator, well, let's, let's do 207 divided by 1.15. Maybe that'll, 1.15 goes into 207, add some decimals, push this 2 to the right, 2 to the right, decimal goes there. 115 goes into 207 one time. 1 times 115 is 115. And then, let's see, it's 85 plus 7, right, to go 85 plus 7 is 92, 920. And then this should go roughly. 8 times, 8 times 115 is 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Oh, it actually was exactly 920. Great. OK, let me make sure that I, so before gratuity, it was $180. So before gratuity, our price was $180. And now we have to divide that by 15 to get the average price. So 15 goes into 180, how many times? 1 times 15, 30, 15 goes into 30, 2 times. So the average price before gratuity was exactly $12, B. And I'm out of time.